Okay, so this may actually surprise you. If you're having a heart attack, you might not always get chest pain. I'm a doctor from London, and in this video, I will share with you seven warning signs of a heart attack that you should never ignore. This may save your life or the life of a loved one. But first, let's clear up a really common misconception. Is a heart attack the same thing as a cardiac arrest? Well, the answer to that is no. Cardiac arrest is when your heart goes into an unusual electrical rhythm or stops beating and you may need CPR or a shock to get it going, like you see in the movies. Lots of things can cause this to happen, so you can have internal bleeding, you can have heart valve problems, your heart could be enlarged, something called cardiomyopathy, you may not have enough oxygen in your blood, and sometimes you get it if you're electrocuted or drowning. So what is a heart attack then? Well, it's called a myocardial infarction, and this happens when muscles of your heart don't receive enough blood. This in turn means that they start to die, and the more time that goes on without treatment or restoration of the blood flow, the greater the damage that occurs to the heart muscle. Coronary artery disease, so disease of the arteries of the heart, is the main cause of heart attacks. And so a heart attack needs to be treated immediately and as quickly as possible. You can be given medicines or have a surgical procedure which restores the blood supply to your heart, and the sooner this is done, the better because in reality, time is muscle. The more time you waste, the more muscle dies. And knowing that this is a medical emergency can save your life. And remember, it won't always be like in the movies where somebody grabs their chest and is like, God damn it, I'm dying here. That was actually a really terrible American accent and acting, but Hollywood does it better. And it's classically someone clutching their chest, cursing their luck towards the stars, collapsing to the floor. You might be surprised to know that months ago, a lady walked into my clinic, casually had a conversation with me, and she was actually in the middle of having a heart attack. I'll tell you a little bit more about this story in a bit, but first let's dive into the first symptoms to look out for. So I told you that not everyone who gets a heart attack will get chest pains, but chest pain or discomfort is one of the common symptoms that people present with. It could be described as a pressure feeling or squeezing on their chest or heaviness, it can also sometimes feel like indigestion, so people will say us oh, like the worst indigestion I've had or acid reflux. Some patients feel like there is an elephant sitting on their chest, although they may not describe it that way. Women are more likely to have other symptoms apart from chest pain, so things like shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, back pain or jaw pain. And the second symptom to look out for is this nausea feeling or actually being physically sick. This is caused by a phenomena called cardiogenic nausea or vomiting. During a heart attack, as your blood vessel supply to the heart muscle gets blocked, so no oxygen comes in, no nutrients come in, and you get a buildup of toxins, meaning that the cells begin to die, and these dying cells release their own waste products and metabolites. This in turn interacts with a part of your nervous system called your autonomic nervous system, and in turn gives you a feeling of sickness or makes you vomit in the end. But remember, not everyone who has nausea or vomiting will be having a heart attack. There are actually a plethora, and yes, I use the word plethora. I always try to use that in, in, in essays, which makes it sound cool. But there are a plethora of things that could cause nausea from a tummy bug to thyroid problems to yeah to pretty much name anything you like can cause nausea but if you're having nausea and vomiting and you get some of the symptoms that we talk about in a bit then I'd be a bit more worried and certainly if you suddenly start to feel lightheaded or dizzy this can also be a symptom of heart attack if your heart muscle is dying it may not be able to pump blood adequately remember we are alive because of something called blood pressure and that's a constant pressure that supplies the blood around our body so blood that goes to our brain and organs and if the blood pressure drops below a certain amount and you're standing up and walking around you may not get enough blood going to the brain and you may start to feel lightheaded or dizzy so suddenly if you start to look very pale you start to feel very dizzy and you're getting some of the symptoms we talked about then this could be in a worrying sign and during a heart attack your heart can also go into an unusual rhythm and this in turn affects the pumping ability of it which can cause dizziness as well the next symptom to talk about is sweatiness or feeling very clammy. During a heart attack, you may suddenly break into a sweat with cold, clammy skin. There's no clear answer why this happens, but some theories suggest it could be down to a part of our nervous system that is being stimulated. It's our sympathetic branch of our nervous system. Um, you may know it as our fight or flight response. 
Go back to that story of the lady that walked into my clinic. She told me she had a few hour history of just not feeling quite right, but she didn't want to bother the doctor. It was actually her husband who told her to go in. She was kind of sweating profusely while she sat there before me and she looked very, very clammy. Her hands were clammy and it wouldn't take a medical professional to notice that something wasn't quite right here. So we sat there and went through a clear history to try and work out what was making her feel unwell. So. The history was she was diabetic, uh, but her blood sugars were actually normal that day. She had no infective symptoms, so no cough, no cold, no sore throat, no uh, coughing up of sputum, and no urinary tract infection symptoms, no diarrhea, that kind of thing. But she described this dull pain in her upper abdomen, just, just below her chest, a kind of pressure feeling. And on examination, her heart rate was a little bit faster, about 105. Her blood pressure was actually stable. When I was palpating her abdomen, it felt absolutely fine. There was no tenderness, there was no signs of any acute abdominal issues. And so, based more on a gut feeling and how she looked, we actually called an ambulance. And by the time they arrived, we had a look at her ECG and she was having a full blown heart attack. This was an important lesson for me that heart attacks can present in different ways in diabetic patients, in women sometimes. And it's not always chest pains, it could be abdominal pains or aches and pains in different areas. And sometimes it can be profuse sweating or grey pallor or a number of the other symptoms we're going to cover next. Okay, on to the last three symptoms to watch out for. The very first one would be pains in other parts of the body. If it feels as if the pain is spreading to the chest or you, the arm, sometimes it can be the left but not always, so if it's the right arm as well, sometimes they describe the pain going to the jaw, the neck, um, all of these would be worrying features. Also, if you get shortness of breath, if you're gasping to catch your breath or not able to sit comfortably and you're breathing very quickly, as you see, the heart is a pump that sends blood around the body and into the lungs to take oxygen around the body. And if that pump is not working properly, your circulating tissue are not getting enough oxygen. And this in turn can make us feel more short of breath. This could come on gradually or suddenly. So all shortness of breath is important to investigate as they can often be underlying issues going on. And lastly, if you feel an overwhelming feeling of anxiety, similar to a panic attack, because panic attacks can be very similar to having a heart attack, you can get chest pain or discomfort, you can get shortness of breath, you can feel lightheaded, you can get tingling around your lips, nausea, vomiting, feeling of impending doom or sweatiness. If you have any doubts about your symptoms, it's better to be on the safe side. Often if you go to the hospital, they could do checks like a blood test called troponin that looks for any damage to the muscles of your heart. They can also do an ECG, which is a trace of your heart, and that's kind of looking at the electrical conduction of the heart. Both of these would be normal if you're having a panic attack. So while the most common symptom is chest pain, not everybody will get chest pain, and it's important that we look out for some of the other symptoms. Heart attack symptoms can persist over days or they can come on suddenly and very unexpectedly. And symptoms of heart attacks may not be as dramatic as we see on movies or TV shows. Incidentally, if you've seen the movie The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, the heart attack scene in that one is quite a good representation. You've got the initial sweatiness, he's kind of slumped over, not feeling quite right. He then gets up and feels sick, vomits, then he's holding his arm and is feeling very very unwell okay fine he collapses but sometimes you need that in movies so the key take home is that heart attack can start with very subtle symptoms that we've talked about today so now we have the knowledge of what to look for sometimes as human beings we convince ourselves that it's not going to be a heart attack it's probably nothing I'll, I'll go for a nap and it'll probably settle key message I have is if you're starting to get these symptoms and it's getting worse, you should call emergency services. Paramedics and medical professionals don't mind if we rule out things. What is more alarming is when somebody sat at home with a heart attack and they could have got help and they could have felt better, but now they've got lifelong changes. So if you think you're having a heart attack, call the emergency services, sit down, try and stay calm. I know easier said than done. And if you have no reasons you can't take aspirin, it will be 300 milligrams of aspirin while you wait. Obviously, if you have, you know, history of ulcers or tummy bleeds or those kind of things, and or an allergy to aspirin, then that may not be a good idea. And like me, if this has reminded you to actually get some aspirin, then this is your reminder to stock up just in case you get into a situation 
say at a house party or something like that. Please let me know in the comments if you have had any of these symptoms or if you've recently had a heart attack and you want to share your story. One of the biggest reasons people can get a heart attack can be linked to high blood pressure. Click on the next video which can tell you a bit more about the hidden symptoms you need to look out for. And again, thank you for watching. Hope you have a lovely day and peace out.